Hello, Namaskaram and welcome to Back to the Roots channel. In this channel, my mother and I um, will be sharing some good things that we learn about uh, Sanatana Dharma. It is an ocean. So in our lifetime, we'll probably only be able to um, learn a few drops, but I thought it's worthwhile sharing uh, what we learn. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about a story which comes in Srimad Bhagavatam and it is also sung by uh, Arvargar in uh, their pastorums. This is a story of uh, Gajendra and how he attained moksha. So Gajendra moksha is a story. Now, there's there was meant to be a beautiful uh, hilly area called Trikuta and in there was a beautiful lake, a very serene, uh, picturesque lake with beautiful, beautiful flowers, colourful, very aromatic and um, the banks of the lakes are said to have precious stones on them like gems and so on. So that's how beautiful it was meant to be and anyone who went there would be in awe of the beauty and wouldn't want to come out of uh, that place. So they'll be enchanted by the beauty of that um, lake. In that area lived Gajendra, the elephant uh, leader, along with his uh, family and the rest of the herd of um, elephants. One day he was very thirsty and they all went to the lake to quench their thirst. When they went there, they got so carried away by the beauty of this place that they decided to, um, well, they couldn't quite decide because they were just so carried away. They spent a lot of time having uh, fun, merrymaking there. They were playing in the water, playing with the flowers there, and they were just um, absorbed into having fun in uh, the lake. And this went on for a long time. And Gajendra at one point plucked a lotus uh, flower that lake is said to have had very different types of lotuses as well. He plucked a lotus flower and put it at the end of his tusk and lifted it as if to offer to Lord um, Vishnu. At that point, his leg was snapped by a crocodile. And he tries very hard, he struggles to get uh, rid of that um, hold from the crocodile, but he's not able to. The family of uh, elephants, the herd, the rest of the herd, his friends, all of them try to relieve him from that um, hold. But no, they are not able to do that. Gajendra himself is a very mighty elephant, uh, being the leader, but he wasn't able to get rid of uh, the crocodile's um, hold at all. It takes few years apparently, according to the Bhagavadam, not, not days of uh, struggle, it's years and years of struggle. And slowly over time, Gajendra loses um, energy. So he's becoming less and less energetic, just like how we would do if we were involved in a fight for that long. And over time, his body submerges in the water to the point that only the tusk with the lotus, sorry, the trunk with the lotus is seen uh, in, the air, in the air above the water. So at this point, Gajendra realizes that um, he has tried so hard, his family, his friends have all tried very hard to relieve him from this um, hold by the crocodile, but none of them have succeeded. Neither has he succeeded, nor his uh, family and relatives and friends have succeeded. So clearly it is beyond them and he needs a supreme power, a higher power to come and relieve him from this. And at that point he starts offering his prayers to Lord Vishnu. If you get time, do uh, try to read the slokas in the Bhagavadam the slokas that uh, Gajendra has recited because they're just so beautiful. He's beautifully uh, described the power, the characteristics of uh, Lord Vishnu. And he prays um, to Lord Vishnu saying, you should come and protect me. That's it. I'm not able to do anything more. I surrender to you. Now, th this part of the story I uh, have picked up from uh, Mr. Velikuri Krishnan's uh, discourse and if you get time please do listen to that as well. Um, apparently the day that uh, Gajendra surrendered was um, like Narayana's off-duty day so he was only trying to relax and was not necessarily planning to go anywhere but when this uh, call came from Gajendra the Lord was in such a rush when he, although he wasn't even ready to get out of his place he was in such a rush to go because he had to attend to his devotee's call immediately. So he leaves his uh, boat and he gets on uh, Garuda. And Garuda is not even sure, he's not been told the destination or anything, but he's being told by uh, Lord Vishnu to hurry up because he is in a rush, he has to get here. 
the devas at one point um, are wondering whether is it lakshmi that is in trouble is that why um, he is trying to rush is uh, bhuma devi his consort uh, the two consorts are they in trouble what is going on why is he rushing so much what's happening to the lord uh, he rushes so much that his um, ornaments are all dislodged and you you can clearly tell that he has been rushing and at one point he even finds garuda to be slow and he uh, gives uh, garuda a piggyback to reach this place much faster so eventually they reach this place and when they come uh, lord vishnu uses his sudarshana chakram one of his uh, weapons to uh, kill the crocodile and relieve uh, gajendra from the hold of the crocodile at that point gajendra says i've had enough of this um, birth death cycle please liberate me from this and give me moksha and that's what lord blesses him uh, with and gajendra attains moksha now this is essentially the story of gajendra moksha how he attains salvation or moksha now the, there are two back stories also because someone could ask why and how gajendra an elephant was able to understand um, that it means to pray to lord vishnu and how could he say all these shlokas so the back story is that um, gajendra in his previous birth was a king called indradyumna and he was a very strong devotee of vishnu even in that birth he had been uh, meditating and while he was meditating one day uh, sage agastya along with his students and other sages had come there and because indradyumna was busy meditating he did not pay attention to the sage he did not see him coming so he did not offer all the respects that you're supposed to offer when a sanyasi or a sage comes so this uh, makes uh, agastya quite angry and curses um, indradyumna to be born as an elephant now although indradyumna has been cursed he is not perturbed by this uh, curse because he is a strong to a believer in uh, lord vishnu and he is not swayed this way or that way by all these curses because of his um, belief the strong belief that he had he is said to have had the memories of lord vishnu even in his birth as gajendra and hence that explains why he instinctively uh, prayed to uh, lord um, vishnu he was also blessed with uh the opportunity to get moksha through vishnu in uh, this birth so that is the back story of um, the elephant gajendra the crocodile you might be wondering how come killing the crocodile is acceptable after all the crocodile was just doing what its nature is so the crocodile has a back story as well he was uh, hu hu a gandharva king a tribal king and when he was playing in the same lake along with his wives and family one uh, sage came uh, into the lake to offer his um, duties in the water and at that time uh, he was very playful who who was very playful and he went and pulled the sage's leg the sage was um, angered by this and he cursed who who to be born as a crocodile so that he can just keep doing the same thing just snap people's uh, legs while they come into the lake so that's exactly what uh, the crocodile was doing but who who realizes his mistake and pleaded uh, with um, the sage along with his wives as well that uh, he be liberated but the sage said the curse is given and it cannot be changed what can be done is that i will bless you to attain moksha when you are uh, killed by the sudarshana chakram of the lord vishnu so that's essentially what happened this kind of explains that everything happens for a reason although we may not know it at that time and we may Uh, fret we may be upset why certain things are happening but things happen for a reason now one of the most interesting things for me about the story and many other stories in sanatana dharma is the use of metaphors now the reason why metaphors suddenly uh, became very interesting to me is because in my studies in uh, neuro linguistic programming and hypnotherapy i have understood that metaphor uh, is used as a strong technique to reach people's subconscious mind and help them see things a bit more clearly how much ever you feed to your conscious mind it is not usually enough you need to change your subconscious to make a permanent change in your life and use of metaphors the metaphorical language is um, said to be extremely powerful in treating uh, people's um, mental health problems so to me the metaphor that i see in this story is that the way the elephants were absorbed in the beauty we are also absorbed in uh, the beauty in life when i say beauty it is things like um, 
how we have become slaves to the sense organs. We are going by what they dictate. We want to see beautiful things, we want to hear certain things, we want to eat certain things because we like the taste of them and so on. So instead of using the sense organs based on our control, we have allowed them to take control of us. And in, in the process of living, we've forgotten the purpose. We've just submerging ourselves in this ocean of um, life and forgot that our purpose is to attain a break, that's it, moksha from this life. So just like the elephant tried and the friends and families tried, no one else can do it for us and there is only one power that can do it for us and that is Lord Vishnu. So surrendering to him wholeheartedly with our hands raised saying there is nothing more that I can do, it's only you and you alone can protect me and relieve me from this that we can attain um, the permanent solution although it, we are not able to we are not even able to see that that is indeed the permanent solution we are so absorbed in the worldly pleasures that we are not able to see that so to me this story represents that metaphor and i think it's quite powerful to remind ourselves that rather than becoming slaves to our sense organs let's use it for the purpose for which it has been given to us it is our slave we are not its slave with that i conclude this uh, video please do share your comments and if you like this video please share with others i think we all have a responsibility to share good things with others and help them think um, for themselves rather than making uh, decisions for them so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share subscribe to our channel and do leave your comments i'll see you in another video until then, bye-bye.